We are here, and I'm about to open up Adobe InDesign. Here's what the home screen looks like. If you've used this a few times before, or if you're using it for the first time, my intent is to show you a few things that will help you get started with your typography composition project in Graphic Arts 2. All right. In the home screen, I'm going to see right now a few things. This is a project that I started yesterday. I could open it up and keep working on it, but I think I'm recreating this one today. It gives me some um, formats that I might need to start really fast if I want to do something very common. If I want to get right into the InDesign interface, I can go hit new file. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So I'm just working on something that's not a file or anything right now. But I'm going to go back to home because we'll go through and look at a few things in home here. Let's see. I want to go look at some presets with you guys. So um, there's some recent items I've used before. Let's go. Here are some print presets. These are all um, printing sizes. But you're going to notice all of these ones have 51P, 66 these are all in picas. Pica is a format of measurement that's pretty unique to the printing industry. It is easier to divide up into more small pieces without having a fraction than inches are. So I don't know what size it's supposed to be though in picas, but we do know that it is supposed to be 11 by 17 inches. So first thing I think I'll do is change my units to inches. And right now, letter size, that's 51 by 66 picas, is 8.5 by 11 inches. That's yeah, your standard letter size paper. I think we'll go change this, though, to a page that is like two letter size papers put together. 11 by 17. You could do yours in landscape or portrait orientation. That's fine. The other thing I think I'll work on is I think I'll change the margins down to 0.25 inches and see they're all locked together at 0.25, one quarter inch. Not going, to, not going to do anything with the bleeds or the slugs. That might be something you do in a coming up project. Let's see, hitting create. All right, in InDesign, we call this the pasteboard, the white page where we're putting all of our elements. It's because InDesign works like having a piece of paper and putting things down on the piece of paper. It is a page layout program, which differs from a word processing program in that it's meant to put text and images anywhere on the page that you want to and manipulate them exactly like you want them to be without InDesign getting in the way and trying to do formatting. You might have had problems in Microsoft Word or Google Docs trying to put images and text boxes in the right places without the program getting in the way and trying to shove things in the wrong places. InDesign is built so you can put things exactly where you want them. That's why it's a page layout program. So here we go. Most of what we need to do in this particular assignment is going to have to do with um, putting text in the right places, manipulating text. All right, when you open it up, I had, to, I had to change this. When you open it up, you won't see all of the stuff on top that was just there. Yeah. To work with typography, like you're doing most likely for this assignment, you make things easier on yourself by going up to Essentials and changing it over to Typography Layout. Okay, in Typography Layout, you'll get some of these things up here, which will make it very easy to control all of the text that you put in your project. Most of the operations in your typography composition will start out by going to the Type tool, making a text box, and modifying what's in there. So I'll make this text box a little bigger. This part, I think I'm going to just make a title for this.
Okay, so I have an insert point inside my text box. Title uh, poster. Okay, and we'll start to do things with this. I have a few plans, but this lets us start to utilize some of the tools that are specific to typography and InDesign. First thing I'll do is uh, <laughs> I'm going to change the font size. So I have a, um, I'm using Minion Pro right now, which appears to be the default font in InDesign. I would never suggest you use the default font that you see in any program because um, it's kind of easy to recognize that uh, you're using something like that. 72 point, sorry, 72 point font is going to be exactly one inch tall, typically after it's printed out. Let's see. Let's go choose a different type. I'm going to try to use the term font and the term typeface in their proper connotations because they mean a little bit different thing. When I end up talking about a typeface, it's the general family of the design of type versus when I talk about a font, it is the specific size and collection of other characteristics that are put on that text. There are a lot of options here. If it works on this project, I'll also have you install at least one other typeface on your computer to, to think about using. I want, I think I'm going to use something that has um, serif. Hey, let's try that. Dev, Devanagari. I've never used this before, but we'll try it out. I'm looking at the assignment prompt and I'm looking down at some of the understandings that you need to demonstrate while you're working on this. First one I'm checking out is called tracking. So we're going to manipulate our tracking. I have my text selected and I'm going up to here, looking at some of these different things I can work with. And let's see if I hover over. Yeah, there it is. Tracking. All right. If I start to manipulate tracking on this project, you're going to see <laughs> subtle changes in the spacing between the characters of my type. This is where we get super nitty gritty with how things work. I think I'm going to go take this text box and take it all the way to my margin. I'll be looking at this one and I think I can go a little bit bigger with my font here. Yeah, not quite that big though. All right, and I have it spaced out with tracking a little wider than it normally would be. Uh, I'll do some other things with this still, so I, I'll probably have to go and manipulate some of that also. Tracking is manipulating the amount of space in between each of the characters. The space that in the distant past would have been achieved by putting little blocks of spaces inside there. It's called tracking. Okay, next one. It's called letting. Now, we're not going to be able to do letting on this one until I have more lines of text, which gives me an opportunity to show you a cool thing that you can do. Let's see, I'm making a new text box. I don't have any text in it yet, but let's see, I think I'll say this is going to be a little bit bigger than it is. And here is the trick. Going into type all the way down fill with placeholder text. All right, this is exactly what I was looking for. In some instances, we might call this Greeking, but it's placeholder text. Because you can, this is set up to be able to design your layout without necessarily knowing what someone else is going to write for you. So placeholder text is pretty useful 
when you're thinking about what things look like, if you're not sure exactly what it needs to say in your text boxes yet. Uh, v, yeah, there. I have some text that is a specific typeface. Let's go change it to a different typeface. Let's not, let's not move things around so fast in our Zoom. Okay, that'll work. We'll have it all selected. Uh, let's use something besides Minion Pro. Come on. I'm going to try that. All right. Now, let's say that I don't want the uh, vertical spacing on this to be set up in the default for that typeface or for that font. I'll have it all selected and we're going to start to use letting. If I hit up or down on my letting control, it's going to act as though it has uh, different size spaces in between each line of text. Yeah, there we go. You have, might have to be careful that you don't um, overspace things so that they go outside of your text box or go back in and manipulate your text box. But what I really wanted to do was condense this a little bit so there's a little less space than, um, than it wanted to do on its own. Next one is kerning. All right. So kerning is something where we're getting really specific into... Um, typography. If you decided that you're looking at some of this text and you think a few of these letters are too close together, you can start messing around with kerning. All right, kerning control is right here. And you need to put your cursor or your insert point in between two characters. You can start to manipulate kerning. So I'm putting the E just a little bit closer to the L. Um, I think maybe the L has a little bit of some spacing, spacing issues. Um, I'm looking at kind of like the feeling of the white space in between those ones. Um, let's see, I'll, I'm going to put the O and the F just a little closer together. And let's see, between these ones, I would probably take a little bit of space closer to that O because yeah, the O feels like it's kind of a little bit out there alone. All right, that's kerning. All right, we'll, we'll manipulate size on a couple of these ones. I think I can take these two. I want them to be a little bit bigger. Don't, can I go with 80? I think I can because I'll do something else. Changing font size on this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with 80. And what I really wanted to do was manipulate that one turn the up down a little bit it's starting to look kind of funny because the of has a lot of space above it but I think I have I have an idea of something I want to do with that 84 yeah this is looking okay So I might go in and um, see if we can change weight of this one specifically. At this point, I'm going in, I'm going to change this typeface to a different one that has a little, a few more controls. So if I go to Rockwell, you can see I have at least four different options. Um, what I think I'll do is uh, take of, but let's go make the of bolder than the rest of it. All right. I'm at the point where I'm um, <laughs> going back in and fixing some of the stuff that I started to mess up now. I think it's time to start to work on baseline shift. So I want to take this of and do something else with that. Baseline shift is right here. And I'm just bringing that up above 12 points higher than it normally would be. Maybe go back down a little bit to 10. Hey, that's looking okay. I think I'll recurrent a couple of things. Let's try some stuff with justification. So I have this paragraph of uh, Greek gibberish right here. Text selected in here, and all my justified controls are over here. So normally you're going to see your text justified to the left. Uh, 
you might have instances where you want to center justify, and you've probably done this before. Maybe you didn't have a word for it, though. Something that's kind of fun to do is to write justify, and maybe you have a graphic element or something that ends up happening on this side. And one thing that's kind of interesting is to go in and rigidly justify, yeah, justify all lines. So the beginning of every line and the end of every line are completely justified with the edges of your text box. And the program went in and varied the spacing inside all of the paragraph in order to achieve that. So if you like that look, that might be something to do. You might have better luck doing something like that where it lets some, it lets at least one word have a hanging indent. All right, I bet we can rotate something. This gives me an opportunity to show you a few other things that you might have to do in menus. I have rotation selected and we're going to object and we're getting into transform controls, which you might recognize from some other programs too. But we're going to hit rotate. We'll choose, we'll say we're rotating it negative 30. Okay. And I'll preview it. If I like it, I can hit okay. Go put it in a place. That was pretty easy. A few other things on the project prompt that I'll probably put into a different video. But I do want to make sure that if you make good progress on this, that you're going to save your project, give it a name. We're saving this one right now. Your first name, your last name, and the name of the project. It's called a naming convention which as a Graphic Arts 2 student, you should be able to handle. Yeah. Saving this one on the desktop, maybe you have a folder for yours. You can go back and save it as a CS4 document, which would open on the older version of InDesign that we used 12 years ago. There is not a lot of reason why you would have to do that. All right. At that point, You're <clears throat> at that point, whatever you created would be available back in the home screen as long as you don't get rid of it on your computer. So hopefully that lets you get a start on this project. Thanks for watching.